Hi students, in thermodynamics one of the most interesting aspect is second law and in this particular uh, small discussion I would like to highlight the features of uh, entropy change in an adiabatic process. As you all know first of all adiabatic process is a process where there will not be any heat exchange between system and surrounding and especially in this uh, video I would like to uh, highlight in a reversible process. First uh, one of uh, the most important feature of a reversible process is the system and surrounding always exist in equilibrium. Whatever small change that occurs in the system will impact the surrounding to the same extent but in an opposite way. So, whatever that happens to the system the surrounding also will receive the same in an opposite manner. So, in an adiabatic process there is no heat exchange between system and surrounding. So, obviously, if at all a system is undergoing some expansion kind of a thing, suppose there is a system with V1 and T1 volume 1 and temperature 1, it is undergoing some expansion process to volume 2 and temperature 2. So, once uh, expansion is taking place we can just think of volume alone, but why are we thinking of temperature? This being an adiabatic process there is no heat exchange, so system has to make use of its own energy for expanding. So, at the cost of systems energy expansion is taking place, so definitely the temperature will drop. So, we can say volume 2 is greater than volume 1, temperature 2 is less than temperature 1 because there is a loss of energy to the system and we want to calculate delta S of this. Students should remember one very vital thing in a reversible process that is we have got P V power gamma is constant. From this we know P 1 V 1 power gamma is P 2 V 2 power gamma. So, from this we can conclude is V 2 by V 1 power gamma minus 1. All these relations student must keep in mind while dealing with a reversible process. So, here also the volume and temperature hold good for this particular relation that you just keep in mind. So, what is happening? So, increase in volume will increase entropy, decrease in temperature will decrease entropy. So, what is the net effect? Increase in volume increases entropy decrease in temperature decreases entropy. So, who will dominate or uh, will entropy be 0, change in entropy be 0 all that we have to prove. So, let us approach in a mathematical way. So, I would first convert the state into V 2 at T 1 only. So, entropy being a state function I can split the process into two different uh, steps and I, then I can add up. So, I will call this entropy change as delta S 1 and from here I will go to state 2 where the entropy change is delta S 2. If I can add up delta S 1 and delta S 2 I will get overall delta S, but in the first step volume is changing temperature is not changing. So, I can call it isothermal. In the second step volume is not changing temperature is changing I can call it isochoric. So, how we calculate the entropy in an isothermal change? So, entropy in isothermal change is delta S is equal to 2.303 nR log V 2 by V 1 and this is the expression we, we, we pretty well know for an isothermal change in uh, uh, whenever the temperature is constant, but in the second step what is happening? Volume is remaining constant just there is a change in temperature. So, in this step how will we calculate entropy? So, delta S in constant volume 2.303 N C V log T final by T initial. Now, if you add up I will get overall entropy change of the system. Let us do that. So, delta S system will be 2.303 N R log V 2 by V 1 plus 2.303 N C V log T 2 by T 1. But here one should be very careful V 2 being greater than V 1 this is a positive value in expansion 
t 2 being less than t 1 this is a negative value. Now, which will be dominating based on that we will have to conclude and we know pretty well t 1 by t 2 can be replaced. So, this can be written as 2.303 n r log v 2 by v 1 in place of t 2 by t 1 2.303 n c v log because I know t 1 by t 2 is equal to v 2 by v 1 power gamma minus 1, I can write it as v 1 by v 2 power gamma minus 1. So, I will re rewrite this 2.303 n r log v 2 by v 1. Now, I would like to change the sign 2.303 n c v log v 2 by v 1 power gamma minus 1. So, I will bring gamma minus 1, C v is r by gamma minus 1, 2.303 n r log v 2 by v 1 minus 2.303 n. In place of C v, I can write r by gamma minus 1. I will bring gamma minus 1 forward log v 2 by v 1, gamma minus 1, gamma minus 1 get cancelled and these two terms get cancelled, I am getting 0. So, from this small derivation or whatever you call mathematical approach, I proved that delta S system is 0 and delta S surrounding is obviously 0 because it is an adiabatic process. Therefore, in an adiabatic reversible process, delta S system is 0, delta S surrounding is anyhow 0. Therefore, delta S total universe is also 0. So, the conclusion is in any adiabatic reversible process delta S surrounding 0, delta S system 0, delta S total is also 0. Thank you.